Hey guys, we are live. So this one, this video comes from a question that was on a previous live stream, which is about wingmanship rules. So I just kind of wanted to go over what the rules are, what everyone needs to know, how to find a wing, what's the job of the wing, and uh, if you guys even need one. So first off, a little bit of my my background with it is my wing was uh, not actually my friend. He was a friend of a friend. And the funny thing is he had actually got the game first and then kept it a secret from me. So he told the other guys in my social circle, everyone back then just to call me just Grush by my last name. So uh, I guess the, the word was, they're like, Grush is already good with girls. Don't don't let them know it. Don't, let, don't tell them about it. Otherwise, none of us will have a chance, which is interesting because that's like an AFC mindset thing where you're already coming from a place of scarcity. And I didn't think I was that good, but I guess maybe I was because I'd already been married and already dated some uh, pretty attractive women. And some of the guys in the group were virgins. And I think two of them actually, originally the first night we went out, there was four of us, two of them were virgins. And I don't even think he'd ever even kissed a girl before. So we had, um, were out one night and I saw one of the virgins, he got up. And like cold approach, two flight attendants that were at a table behind us and didn't open her on them. They started laughing. They go, wow, you're funny. Come sit with us. And I was watching this and I was like, what the, what the, how'd that happen? How did so-and-so make that happen? Because I would have had tons of trouble doing that, even with a couple drinks in me. And that's when the other guy who was the virgin at the table was like, oh, it's the book, the game. You got to read it. So I've, I've said this before out of anyone out there who'd be talking the most shit about this stuff. Like it would have been me if I hadn't seen it like in action, like before I heard the book. So I understand why I get so much hate. Anyways, I saw it. I was a believer. And there's a good quote from Tony Robbins where true change only comes from inspiration or desperation. So I was inspired because I saw this. I saw what was possible. And also because I was divorced, I was desperate. So it was like from both sides coming at it. So I read the game in like three days and I, I, I think I just read one third of it and was out that night. Like I got it from one of the guys a couple nights later, like got it from them, started reading it and then was getting excited. So then they're like, Hey, we're all going out to mill, which is like the cool street by ASU, which ASU has like, there's a reason I moved back to Arizona because the women there are like some of the most attractive I've ever seen in the world. So they're going to that, that street where all the bars and stuff are. Normally, I, I would be like so scared. I would never go there. I didn't like it. I pretended I didn't like that stuff, even though I just it was like social anxiety keeping me away from it. And we ended up going out. And then there's a great story about this that uh, that night. Maybe I'll share it some other time. But crash and burn. Horrible. Everything could have gone wrong, went wrong. The funny thing is all that stuff turns into like good, funny stories and lessons later. So it, it might have sucked in the moment, but it was hilarious. And so glad we did it. Anyways, we went out another night, one of the guys quit, and then we went out another time and the second virgin quit. So it was just me and my wingman were the only guys that were left. And I actually think that helped out a little bit because like there was a bit of a rivalry and we like kind of, there was a little bit of friction. We kind of didn't like each other the most, but we were both like committed to this. So we, we ended up being wings. Since then, we tried like meeting up with tons of other guys. We did forum meetups and stuff. And that's actually how we got into teaching originally. I never thought that this would ever be a career or anything. But we started doing little forum meetups for the local guys here. And then some guys were coming from out of state just because I guess we were putting out some good stuff and people were uh, seeing that we were walking the walk. And so guys came from like California, road tripped out here just to hang out with us. And then we realized we had to train these guys just so they could hang out with us. And that's really where like a lot of this started getting quantified and written down was like we had to teach just because they were so bad when we go out with them, they would like ruin our spots or they would ruin anything we were doing. So we had to like come up with like, this is how you guys have to behave. That was a big part of it. The second part of it was just my wing and I, we had to figure this stuff out. And so there's, I was just thinking of it today. There was lots, countless examples where he would be in a group of, of people talking to them and then I would come in and, and see a girl who I was like, ooh, that girl's not that attractive. Like, clearly he's going for this girl because she's smoking hot, not going for this girl. And then I would start talking to her. And that happened a couple of times. And then after like the third time, I think he was like, 
why do you keep going for my girl? And I was like, wait, what? Like, those are the type of girls you like? And that was why it worked out so well that we were wings because we had totally different taste. And he liked the hipster emo girls. He used to joke. He goes, I like girls that look like boys who cut themselves to feel. And I was like, all you, brother. That's not my style. It's like, all you. And uh, we had to figure that out because, like, I, I just assumed. So that's really where a lot of this stuff comes from, problems that wings have, is a, false assumptions. So that's number one. You got to talk. The other thing is guys who are coming at it from such an AFC life and perspective and background that as soon as you open a set, they get in there. They're having a good good energy from the set. And then all of a sudden, they're just like, screw you. I don't care who did this, who opened it. Like, it's about me. I'm, I'm they're, they're coming from a place of such scarcity that they, they F over their brothers. They F over their friends just to get that girl. And they do that in their life anyways. And so when you do that, like, you can't be trusted. So that's where the other the other side of this came from. So number one, whoever opens the set owns the set. That's like a classic, classic rule. Because if you don't have the balls to approach, then like you don't get to pick. And when I go in there and start doing my thing, well, married now, but when I would go in there and do my thing, like you don't get to then like steal from me and the work that I've done and uh, doing the hardest part. So once, if that's not followed, if they're not respecting that, then you got to get rid of them. I'd give them one warning afterwards, but if they did it like twice and after I've talked to them once, first off, they already should know the rules. You guys have talked about it beforehand, but then if they did it to you once, if they did it a second time, I just wouldn't go out with them anymore because you can't trust them. And so someone you can't trust isn't a friend and not in my life. So that was a big one. And then you guys also got to make sure that you guys are clearly communicating. And the big issues that would come up is like, oh, who's the girl that I'm into? And so we came up with, well, actually, I shouldn't say we. I, I, I kept it simple because I always joke that I'm a caveman. I just want it to be real simple and easy. But my wing came up with a couple ideas. And uh, and he came up with like one example that was funny was I'd go in to talk to these people and to help them out. And he would go, oh, I'll try to nag the girl. Like I would go, oh, this is Susie. This is she's really cool. This is Ginny. Oh, and then this is Heather. And she got that shirt from Target, almost like buying a shirt from Target's like a nag. And so that way, that would be his way of telling me that's my target, which I don't even like those terms. But then I was like, okay, if that's what you want to do, like you open the set, you're the one who gets to call the shots. And my job as a wing to like is to support you. And I knew he would support me back. So then that was like, while I would do things that I didn't love doing or wasn't the most comfortable for me because it wasn't about me. If he'd opened, then my job is to help a brother out. And so that also helps you start focusing on things from a different perspective too. Cause now you start thinking about the group instead of just one person. So I remember we, he, he came up with that idea. We talked about it we're like, okay, let's do it. And then like that night we went out and then he didn't do it like once. You just forget about it. And so we, we'd laugh about that. There was, um, there was another one we came up with where I don't, I don't want to get too much in the weeds with it. Anyways, he just, we came up with stuff and I was like, here, here, here's the easiest way. And this is the way I did it. And I think this is the simplest way. And this is the way I've always taught. It just makes it super simple. And it also helps you like lead because if you're the one who knows more about this stuff than your wing, you've got to lead. So what I did is I, I would tell my friends, so we'd go out as a group, we'd go out with some friends, even, even after we got good, we'd go out just with friends and then just hang out. And then while I'm walking up to the bar, if I see someone that caught my eye, I have to go talk to her. So some nights we'd go out, just my wing and I, and it would just be straight practicing all these social skills. And we'd each night we'd isolate and pick one thing to focus on. So like how many, how many groups of people are you going to talk to? Are you going to cold approach? And he would go, oh, I'm going to do like 10. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do 11. So that was part of the friend, friendly rivalry. We also had like a rule where one of us, like I had to go first and then he couldn't go till I went. So put a little pressure on me, like tit for tat. And then once you understand the rule too of whoever opens the set, like owns it, well, you, if, you, if you're really going out and doing this, like you'll go to the bar, you'll see a girl you're really into. You're like, that's my style. And if your wing's there and he also digs that, like that style, you better go in first because if he opens it, now your job is to support him. And if you're doing that, then you miss out on the girl who got your heart racing. So that that clicked in my head too pretty quick where I'd went out a few times and there was a girl I saw. I was like, ooh, 
gave me those butterflies, got my heart beating, like made me energy, my DNA, my spirit, whatever you want to, however you want to quantify it. Like me being a man, like it got me going. And I was like, I must talk to her. Like there's something special about her. My body reacted to it. Well, if he opened first and then later crashes and burns or opens first and tries to get her number, now I'm done because I don't, I don't get to go for that. So that was another big part of whoever opens a set owns a set that motivates you because you're like, he could open five sets and then, and again, sets, but he could go and open five groups of people. And that's the only five groups in this whole place. And two of them have the attractive girls. And now I don't have anyone to really talk to. My job's just being a wing. So like I said, that kind of helps motivate you, but we would go out each night, try to come up with a different game plan. Like, what are you going to work on tonight? Oh, I'm going to try to find someone to make out with. And then that, because that's like a different skill set. That's like a different goal. You have different energy when you're talking to someone, a lot more sexual. And other times I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to have small talk. I'm just going to be social because I'm feeling like low energy tonight. So I'm just going to make friends or I'm going to make friends with the people that work here. So like whatever the goal was that night, it kind of helped like we would say it beforehand. So we'd go out. And um, like I said earlier, if I was with a group of just friends or with him, I could, I could make this work no matter what. And I would, I would get up to go get a drink, go to the bar, go to the bathroom, whatever, or just scout out the place. Like, Oh, that's a cool place. I mean, I'm gonna walk around, check it out, walk around and go and open. And then I would tell my wing, like, or my buddy, Hey, if you see me talking to some people and you think I need help, because I didn't want to pressure people into doing it. But I was like, hey, if you if you think you want to help or you, you want to help or you think I need help, then just come over and ask me. And this was the question. And there's like three answers. Come over and uh, tell me that you're going to go to the bar and get a drink and ask me if I want anything. And that right there sets me up for everything. So if your friend comes by and they're like, hey, bravo, I'm getting ready to grab a beer or I'm, grab, I'm going to go grab a drink. You want anything? Well, if I want him to leave me alone because it's not the right time, it doesn't feel good. Then I would just go, no, no, thanks, man. I'm good. And so now what just happened is I have a, a friend who's there, who's caring about me. Like I have a cool bro. Boom. I got some social proof right there. So that's good. But also it's basically letting them know, no, no, I'm good. If he asked me if I wanted a drink and I go, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe next round, check, check back. Well, that's letting them know to give me some time and then come back. Or I might say like, oh, hey, yeah, can you grab me a beer? Or a lot of times I would go, yeah, you know what? Can you grab me a, uh, maybe a nice water? And that tells them like, hey, go to the bar, get a drink and come back. And the amount of time it takes to do that, I'll now be ready for him. It's like almost time, but it's not quite. Or he might come up and be like, hey, bro, I'm going to grab a beer. And I would just like, oh, my God, Gypsy, it's so good to see you, man. Hey, I, this is my buddy Gypsy I was telling you guys about. And that just means, hey, it's time to, time to come in. So it really is up to me on when I want my wing to be in there. So he comes by, he's telling you he's getting a drink. And then he asks you, does, do you want anything? No, thanks. I'm good. Yeah. Maybe in a little bit next round or, Hey, go grab me a drink. That means give him time. Obviously more time. If you're like, Oh, next round, that means like wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then check again or get me a drink. Yeah. I'll take one, whatever it is. And then he goes and gets it. And that could take a minute or two, or it could take a while depending on, on the venue. So you got to keep that in mind. And then other ways, other times he would come in and I would just, otherwise I would say, uh, oh no, hey, this is, my, this is my buddy I was just telling you about, or I told you about earlier. So I'd already prepped him that my buddy was there and he might be coming over. Like, why am I here? Who am I there with? So that way, boom, he just comes in and we're already like going. The other thing we would do is there was lots of little gambits and routines and all that to uh, figure out who we should talk to. And again, I just wanted to keep it simple. So I would just be like, oh, hey, whoever the wing was, hey, this is Christy. This is Heather. Oh, Heather, you guys would be like, oh, I think you guys would really get along. She seems really cool. You guys have like a good a good vibe, good fit, good energy. What You guys seem like you guys would click, whatever it is. Hey, brother, I saw someone hop on here. Welcome to live stream. I would say something like, oh, you guys are a good fit. Oh, hey, you, you should tell her that uh, that joke you were telling her. Tell her that, do that magic trick. Whatever the DHV is that he's good at or he wants to practice. Or sometimes we would just do it like we would, I would, or to have fun, we would throw each other under the bus. Like I remember doing that at a boot camp with a student. And I was like, oh, hey, he was just going to read my palm. He's so good at this. You know what? You should read her palm. And it's a guy who's like never done it before. And he goes, um, 
this is your lifeline. And I used to just make it up on the fly. So you could also have a lot of fun doing that. But really, it was about me kind of being like the puppet master, like pushing them together. So now he doesn't even have to worry, who am I talking to? What's going on or anything? I'm just like basically going, you talk to her. And then that's it. Problem solved. Simple. So that's how I did it is he's grabbing a drink, asking me if I want a drink. Then when he comes in, like accomplishment, accomplishment intro, which I've probably have already done before. And now I'm just bringing it back up and then kind of pushing the people together that uh, I want to talk and basically, Hey, you, you talk to her. Maybe it's the girl who's um, craving attention. Maybe it's the girl who's like the mother hen to the group. Who's like protecting everyone. Maybe it's the girl who's the C block and someone's got to kind of deal with her, whatever it is. But like, I know that because I've been talking to all these people and I've gotten the, the, the lay of the land, the read of the room already. So then I'm kind of like pushing them together. And then he just knows it's his job to, to handle that. And then he'll figure it out as he goes. And that's part of the training process. So that's a big part of it. And then um, when I mentioned on, on the, uh, the description of this, and I'll get to the questions in just a second. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll get to that in a minute. Is um, like I, I was fortunate because a wing that I already knew, like we already were on the same same path together. Like that, that was I, we were pretty fortunate. Most guys don't have that. Most guys don't get that. So we used to tell guys like, "Hey, get on the forums and look around." But the problem is, there's not a lot of forums out there. There's so many weirdos out there, and it's just hard rolling the dice there's not really meetups or anything like there used to be so we do have a discord and there are guys who are on it and i know like if you go to the big city some of the guys would actually travel drive a couple hours just to go out with each other on the weekend so like it, there's a will there's a way you can make time for it and then some of the guys i know too like would be on there and travel around and go hang out with other guys and like oh i'm gonna go to this city i know so-and-so lives there now they got now they got someone to hang out with even if it's just a hangout you don't have to go crazy and just go sergeant and all that. Just hang out. And now you got someone with you. So that that's one way. A lot of guys, though, they're always trying to bring their friends into this stuff. And they're like, hey, I want to bring my buddy into this. I want to get him in this. That's a hard road because a lot of times, like, the foundation of the friendships and the dynamics of all that is already, like, locked in. And when you try to start changing that, a lot of your friends won't like this stuff. They won't like you. I've seen this countless times. I remember the first time I saw this was in high school. There was like this goth girl and she was real pretty. And I, I had drama class with her. And I, I think I even told her once like the year before, I think it was a year before where I was like, she jeans, baggy, ugly clothes and stuff. And I was like, why do you dress like that? Like, you're so pretty. And I, I don't know, I'm not taking credit for it, but the next year, like senior year, she then shows up to school and she still had like dark hair and stuff, but she like then started wearing dresses and really attractive. And all of a sudden everyone's noticing her, but all of her friends were like, Oh yeah. So-and-so they're fake. They're not being who they are. But like a lot of times your friends don't want you to evolve or get better or level up or change because it kind of puts a spotlight on them that they're not. And so when that, when that happens, then you realize very quickly they're not your friends. They're just like your circle, your acquaintances. And so it's like when there's a group of overweight people and one of them starts losing weight, the other people start getting jealous and shit talking them. So what I usually recommend is like taking a step back from your social circle and friends. And then you get good, which means going out without a wingman. You get good at socializing. You get good at going out. And, and if you just get good at cold approaching, like that's a superpower. Like most guys are never going to get good at that. So if you just get good at cold approaching and your friends see that, they're going to be blown away. And so that would probably be the biggest thing I would do. Get good at cold approaching. Become fearless. Even if nothing happens out of it. Well, I shouldn't say nothing happens because something happens. But even if you end up like not getting dates or anything, just the fact you have the balls to do it. Let them see that. And then what happened to me was then friends and friends of friends saw me. And then they would ask, they're like, whoa, what happened to you? Like, Where'd all that confidence come from? We're like, whoa, this is, you're, you're totally different than last time I saw you. So let them recognize it. Because the analogy I always tell people is like, nothing's as annoying as the real overweight person at work 
who all of a sudden started working out like a week ago and is eating a salad and they're still morbidly, morbidly obese. And then they start giving you like diet advice when you're like in pretty good shape and already know more than them. Like nothing's more annoying than that. Right. So similarly, nothing's more annoying than a, a guy who's horrible at dating AFC all of a sudden he read a book and then starts telling all of his friends tips and what they're more importantly, like what they're doing wrong, more annoyingly what they're doing wrong. And then you're like the guy who's been getting girls and doing decent for a while. And this guy's like, not, and he's telling you what, like, so don't do that. Like go out get good, let them see it and then go, Whoa, what happened to you? And you're like, Hey man, I read this book called the game. Or I read some of that pickup stuff. And however you want to say it, like I just decided to get into it and try it out and it worked. Or you could say something like, yeah, I thought it was BS and I wanted to try it and kind of just prove it didn't work. And then I tried it and it worked and it blew me away. So I started doing more of it and I just started, I realized I had really bad social anxiety and I wanted to get over it. So I started going out and doing this and yeah, it's changed my life. And now just like me, people can get inspired and then maybe your friend will come along and you got to have the the wingman talk beforehand where you're like, like one of the things we used to do all the time, especially me, I was the worst at this. So again, when I always tell you guys, like I was bad at this or I was worse than you, like a lot of students don't believe me, but like across the board, I was so bad in so many areas. So like one of the things I always used to do is I would like bust my friend's balls a really bad because that's funny to us, but I would bust their balls in front of strangers. And I would take it even further where I'd like insult them and shit on them to like be funny. Cause again, that was funny to us. But if you just meet someone and I'm shitting on my friend, like my best friend to this stranger to try to be funny, like, what does that convey? What does that sub communicate? So like, I'm, I'm like, a, I'm a dick. Like they're, that, they're going to think I'm like a douchebag. I'm like, Oh, this guy's sh shitting on someone to like, look cool. Like that's not a cool look. So I realized that I was constantly DLVing, demonstrating lower value. I was constantly DLVing all the time in front of girls because I thought it was funny. And that's another big thing you got to realize. Like what, what I think is funny isn't what everyone else thinks is funny. And what guys think is funny isn't what girls think is funny. And also isn't what girls who don't know you and don't know your sense of humor. Like they don't know what's funny. That's funny yet because they don't know you. So like one of my friends made a really inappropriate joke once when I was talking to two girls up in Flagstaff. Hilarious to us, the girls literally looked at each other, got up, and just walked away. And I was sitting at the table just talking. Hey, this guy's married. And, uh, and then I was like, why did you joke about that? Think about the most inappropriate topic to joke about with women. That's what he said. And uh, they got up and just walked away, and he blew me out. And he thought it was hilarious, but he's not into this stuff. So now now I don't have any, any, uh, any more female attention that night, so he blew me out. Anyways, the friend who gets into this stuff you got to make sure you talk to him and say hey if i if i open it and, I, and i'll throw them one or two like i might open a set and then push them towards each other or like sometimes there was the really attractive girl but she wasn't my style like oh hey you guys should talk and then he's like what well oh, oh yeah i'll definitely wing you now because you're opening all these all these groups of people and you're introducing them to girls and it really helps if there's like two attractive girls or three because you're like Oh, hey, you guys should talk or you, you, the two of you and him, you guys should talk about the thing that astrology or magic, whatever it is like you're encouraging them to talk. And now he's there with two girls. So you got to kind of throw him a bone and then hopefully he throws them the bone. But you throw a bone and then that kind of helps let him know like, hey, this is what I'm willing to do for you. You got to lead as a man, lead by example. So then let him know like, hey, when, when you're in a group, when you go and talk to people like. I'll talk to the three gay guys if you need me to and and talk about how great their 12th COVID shot is like, whatever it is, like I'll do that for my wing because he might need that. So I'm going to, I'm going to be a good wing. So once you do that and, and you bring that level of commitment, then you can expect it from him. But if you're not walking the walk, yeah, you can't, you can ask him to do it. So when um, you're trying to bring a friend in lead by example, let them kind of ask you, well, what's different? What's going on here? Same thing like if you're doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You guys are kind of e equal because you're training together, and all of a sudden you start rolling with them, and you're just crushing them. He's like, whoa, what happened? Where'd this come from? And you're like, oh, I started watching these training videos, or I started going to this other school, or I started doing privates, and oh, who am I? Now all of a sudden he's like, I want that because I felt it, and I saw it. So that's a big thing. The 
the biggest thing that happens with having a wing is, yeah, it helps you when you're in a group of people, like have someone talk to them. But later I, I got kind of past that to where I would. So if you open a, a bigger group of people, a lot of times that's easier. Like if you're just going to go cold approach, like two girls, that becomes like the most difficult because they might like have not seen each other for a while. They're looking to like hang out with each other. And then you come in and try to take one person away. And then this person's like left hanging. So that's where the wing really comes in is because when it's like one person or two people left by themselves, like he's, he's got to be like a dancing monkey to, to entertain them and occupy them. So that way they're, they're not feeling left out or like they're missing out. And that's the hardest. But I realized later, I remember once I opened like a, a, a group of people at a table that was near us. I was with some friends and they were at the table near us. And I started talking to one of them and this has happened to us. So I always kind of think it things from different perspectives. Like if someone, if I'm at a big group of uh, table, a group of people and someone comes over and starts talking to me and then I start talking to them and I get up and kind of have a little private conversation over on the side. As long as my body language is cool, like everyone's going to think this is my friend. I know them that everything's fine. We're just having a quick catch up. Maybe this is someone I work with or I train with or whatever. Like people are going to make assumptions like that. And so if you do that to a large group and there's a girl in there and you start talking to her and you guys leave the table or she's like sitting there and gets up and you guys kind of just go over to the side, like as long as everyone there doesn't feel like anything's up, they're just going to go like, oh yeah, she's fine. She must know them because that's what like the body language, that's the, the story they imagine. Also, what I started realizing was a bigger group. When one person leaves, it's like, it's almost like a membrane, like a cell it kind of closes up. It's a lot easier if it's just one person from like a big table because that table kind of doesn't even realize they're missing. And so if you start opening bigger groups of people, then you don't even really need a wing because the rest of everyone just talks to each other and then problem solved, right? So I got to the point later where I would go out and even if I was with my wing, I would just like separate, walk around, do my thing. And then he'd come by and see me. He need a drink. I'm like, no, I'm good. Get a phone number, do whatever. Later, see him talk to some people, walk by. Hey man, I'm getting a drink. You need anything? Oh no, I'm good. Or Hey, come in here. Boom. Now I'm talking to them. Now we go to someone else or go to a different bar and it just became so smooth and easy and like, no, it was just all dialed in. The only problems later is um, sometimes if your wing isn't evolving like you are, then you come in and you just start doing your thing because you're trying to wing and you're being a little bit of a dancing monkey and you might blow your friend out because he's trying to like maybe go have a private conversation or have a little more intimate of a conversation with, with one person in particular. And then she hears me and I'm doing my thing. And then she's like, Oh, I want to go see this. I want to hear that. So that was actually the only thing that came up later was like being too awesome, which is hilarious to say, but like too awesome when she's an earshot. So then later he was like, Hey, can you, can you tone it down a little bit until I to have a little more time with her? But then as a wing, I'm like, yeah, sure, man, whatever you want. So Last part, I think, with this specific, and then I'll get to that question, is I don't I don't recommend really discussing problems or issues when you're out. Like, you could do a mini debrief or, like, a little, oh, hey, you said this, that came off really harsh, like, you need to relax. Like, like one of my videos was, uh, what's the deal with nags? And I remember one night we went out with, like, a group of guys, and I still, to this day, have never really seen a nag ever performed smoothly by anyone else and like i've jokingly done it but i've never really seen i've seen some guys like do ball busting and stuff but never really like a nag nag where it got oh yeah i take it back there was one time later from another coach but other than that that was it so this time was like a guy who got the dvds didn't really know much about it but knew a lot of theory and i remember girls like touching them and one of the one of the classic nags is like hey hands off the merchandise this shit ain't for free and I've heard two guys now try to deliver that, and they did it horribly. And again, it's like a script. It's like a joke. It's like um, it's like a song. You're a cover band. You're you're repeating someone else's stuff. But if you don't do it, if you don't sing that song well, no one's gonna like it. If you don't tell the joke well, it's not gonna be funny. You're not gonna get a laugh. Even though another person tells the joke and gets a huge laugh. So same thing with these lines. You gotta like you gotta have the right energy with it. You gotta deliver it the right way, the way that the guy who invented it or came up with it or wrote it down like the way they figured it out so i remember the girl's touching him and he's like hey hands off the merchandise this shit ain't for free and she's like oh oh, oh i'm sorry 
And I, I heard it. And I was like, oh, fuck. So later on, I was like, hey, man, you got to relax. Just chill out. Like, that sounded real harsh. He's like, oh, okay. So like something like that, I might tell them, like, hey, relax. Or, hey, you got to smile more, man. You're looking like real serious. You're not smiling. Like just something simple, quick. That's it. That's all I would say, like, in field. The real debrief happens, and this is the power of the wing, is at night afterwards. And so we would always go out. Sometimes you go to our house and hang out. But usually we'd go hit like an all-night diner. If we're by ASU, there was like a Denny's there, an IHOP, whatever. Five and diner, we'd go there. And then we'd debrief there. And we would just go down each set, like each group that we had talked to. Here's what, what what'd you open with? What'd you do? How'd it go? Oh, I missed this part. What'd you say there? Oh, something worked well. What was that? We'd just go back and forth. And then we'd give each other the the other person's perspective so like oh yeah i was talking to this girl and this happened and that oh yeah and then you said this i saw that girl smile and she like before she touched you and i'm like oh i didn't see that and so then having another set of eyes there is huge and it's someone who's not like emotionally wrapped up in it like you so having another person there be able to observe and then who's smart who can like give you the feedback later that was that was the the huge benefit of having a wing so we read the game I think three months later, I started feeling like I was seeing the Matrix, starting to see the Matrix. Six months later, multiple girlfriends, doing my thing, living living the crazy life. And less than a year later, like met Neil and then was, was later like offered a job. So how did I get so good so fast? Inspiration, desperation, pushing myself going out. We'd go out about three nights a week, wouldn't drink, didn't really like going out on weekends. I'm hearing impaired and super loud places were hard. So we'd go out to like on the on weeknights and also a little earlier, more chill, especially so we get there and kind of feel more comfortable before it starts getting busy. So we're already there. And then having the wing and breaking things down, like that was that was the, the biggest part. And then it gets to the point where you can break things down yourself and you're like, oh, I should have done this. This is what I should have said. Oh, she said that. That would have been better to do this. And if you a lot of students aren't good enough to track this because it's so overwhelming when you're going out. And so I have a pretty good memory. Like even the stories I'm telling you, like I was like, Oh yeah, the one coach, like I can specifically remember what he said. Like I have a pretty good memory for stuff. Some guys don't. And also when you're in stressful situations, like it's a lot harder sometimes for the, the short-term memory to like go into long-term memory storage. So record it. Get your iPhone, have your earbud out, have an earbud, Bluetooth one recording, um, pull out your phone. I used to say like a notebook, but now just your phone, like go to another table, sit down, take some notes. Like I, I, I didn't, I don't like numbering women like, oh, she's a six, she's a seven. A, it's just dumb. B, it's so subjective. C, it messes with your head. Oh, this girl's a seven. I'm going to go be cool. Oh my God, this girl's a nine. What? Just to me, it's like, is she attractive? Am I into her? Is she cool? Then that's it. Yes or no. It's binary. But I would usually try to come up with like a little nickname, a way of describing them. So that way, like I could remember, oh yeah, this girl was the massage therapist. So massage therapist. Boom, boom. And then I could remember that. Oh, redhead. Boom, boom, boom. I could do that. Red dress. So that way I could kind of remember like as an anchor point for the story, what it was, and then maybe write down some, some bullet points on that. I mentioned earlier too about having a goal when you would go out like that was huge and so sometimes it was like i'm gonna open 10 sets tonight or i'm gonna try to get two phone numbers because quantity versus quality so like changing that up all the time too helped and then a lot of times i would do one and then my wing would do another and so we either wouldn't do the same or we would do the same depending and that would also help us because i don't want to do what he's doing so i'm gonna try to do something different but that was that was the key. So if you don't have a wings who's who's trying to help you, a, a rising tide raises all ships. So a cool wing that's helping you that has your back, that's going to just help you. And if you're doing the same, you guys are both going up. So you want to have cool dudes to roll with if you're going out practicing this stuff. And if I have a couple other guys, even if they're just casually into it, or even if they're just cool guys and they don't even think about this stuff, like that's great. Some people don't. Other people do. Like, you don't have to. Don't try to be forcing it on everyone, too. Again, get good and let them ask about it. So, oh, lastly, too, if um, some guys need a little bit more of a push. I mentioned earlier the tit for tat. Like, oh, I can't open a set till you do. And uh, 11, 10, like, I'm going first. 
but some of the guys would do stuff where they're like, oh, I'm going to give my wing $100. And every time I go and cold approach someone, they give me $20 of it back. And then if I don't do it, they get to keep the money. So now there's like money on the line. Now that's another motivation. I never needed any of that stuff because I decided to change my life and get good at this. So I didn't need $20 here and there to push me because I was already committed. And if you have trouble, yeah, so the attainable goals, that's, that's another part is just like not making anything crazy. Like some guys are like, oh, I'm going to open 20 sets tonight. And I'm like, you're not going to have like good interactions or anything. So if you if you are struggling with the cold approach, then set it high. But once you're good at that, once you can like check mark that box, then you don't need to focus that on anymore because you're not going to on that anymore. You're not going to go out and like talk to 20, 30 people in a day. Like I, once you get good, I would go out and not, not cold approach any female for a month or two. And then I would see one at like CVS or I'd see one at my taco shop and I would, I would see one at the library and I'd see one at Target. And then I'd see one at the bar or I'd see one walking down the sidewalk. And I'm like, oh, I got to talk to her. So once you get good at that, you don't need to go out. That was always something that irritated me when I'd go to like these PUA events and stuff. And I'd hang out with other coaches. I remember one in particular, I'm in New York and we all met up for, for food. And then uh, we're all trying to get back to the, the Airbnb. And like, I have my luggage and another guy has luggage, but a couple other guys have been there already. And they're like escorting us to the, to the Airbnb. And it's only a couple blocks away. And it took us like an hour just to get like two or three blocks. And I'm sitting there with my luggage trying to go. And this, these other coaches just couldn't even walk down the sidewalk and just be like a normal dude and just hang out and just chill. Like every girl they had to talk to, every girl they had to try to pick up and toss over their shoulder and, and just go crazy with. And I'm like, guys, can we just, can, we, can I just go drop off my bags? You can, we can come back out like in like 10 minutes. Just let's go. So I'm taking like an hour to walk there. So that got old when you when you can't go out with guys and just be normal dudes. Like they can't flip the switch off. That was something else that was like a red flag. So yeah, and then remember, even though these crash and burns, I said this right at the beginning, like the crash and burn stories, my, my wing making a girl cry, and then later we ran into her again, and then she like thought I was a dick. She's like, oh, you're really fun, but Bravo's a dick. And I was like the nice one to her. Was like two nights ago, he had like nagged her and made her cry. Um, she was really attractive. And he told her, he goes, you look like a slightly less attractive Julia Roberts. And then she's like, why, why would you say that? And he goes, well, you're clearly not as attractive as her. She's a famous actress. And then she turns and looks at me. And she's like, Bravo, can you show me a magic trick? Because I had done one earlier. Uh, can you show me another one? And then right when I'm getting ready to say yes, he's like, Whoa, 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 we're not dancing monkeys. We're not here. And I was like, no, no, no. I see her like tearing up. I'm like, it's yeah, yeah, I'll do one for you. It's okay. It's okay. And I show her one. She's like, thanks. And I felt horrible. And then a couple of days later, he runs into her. And uh, then she's like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. And they start talking. She goes, oh yeah, you were so cool. But your friend Bravo was a dick. I was like, he told me that later. I was like, what? I was the nice one to her. So anyways, hilarious story. And then like, they kind of hit it off later. But yeah, this is. I miss the days when I would go out and like be nervous about this stuff and it would be exciting because like you didn't know what was going to happen and you're trying out like, like that was some of the most fun days of my life. Like as being a single guy, that was like some of the most fun ever. And I'm not even saying like getting the girl and going home or any of that crazy stuff, just like going out and being nervous and not knowing where the night's going to go. And then later you meet someone and then you get invited to this VIP party later, this after hours party this uh, speakeasy in LA because like, they stopped serving alcohol at whatever, whatever time. And then you go there and now everyone's drinking and they're playing like poker games and we're hanging out with like a celebrity. And then later we go back and all this crazy stuff happens. And like, it was crazy. It was fun. And once I got to the point though, where I was really good at this, like all that excitement kind of went away. I was just like, I know tonight's going to be fun and some cool stuff's going to happen. And that was just the norm. So I actually would tell students this. I know it sounds crazy, but like those days when I was first starting out and I didn't know what to do, like those are some of the best. So some of the, the most happiest memories you'll ever have are like right in front of you if you guys like step up and take it. And then last thing with the wing, um, I just started growing out like my facial hair years ago, like just like a goatee. And I remember I'd get like stragglers that would pop up and I would like stroke my beard all the time trying to like get this down just like the front of it. That's all I had. And uh, 
I remember once my wings like, hey, man, why are you rubbing your face so much? Like, I know you're always paying attention to everything, but like you're doing it a lot. So I figured there's a reason. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know I'm doing it. And then now I'm consciously aware of it and I start consciously tracking it. And I realized I was doing it all the time, talking to people, like just constantly doing this. Hand would go up, constantly do this. So like that's probably one of the greatest examples of what a wing can do is like you're unconsciously aware, you're unconsciously incompetent not aware that you're doing something and they point out something that's super obvious like you constantly doing this uh -huh, uh -huh, okay and because i would get these stragglers and would irritate me i was all insecure about it because i never had facial hair so i'm always doing this and doing this uh, just this now i get to do that but he was just like why are you doing it and then i realized i was doing it. it took me like a month to stop doing it there's a whole story there i can tell you some other time about how i actually had a small chunk of that to like figure out so anyways those are uh those are kind of the the whole meat and potatoes of uh of wingmanship and so my wing and i wrote these up years ago the the pua commandments and the very first one we actually wrote was i dhv my brother i never dlv and so that was uh that was huge because if he's if you're doing that he's not your brother he's not helping you out so all right with that said my yank how to break the ice with the girl you like and not be a creep. So I've talked about that in other videos and it's a lot on my blog really depends on the situation. But if you, if you like break things down, you're either going direct or indirect. And those are the two ways of doing it. Asking a question like that makes me think that you're still new at this stuff. And then the simplest way of doing that is just asking interesting questions and the key to asking questions, which is going indirect. The key to asking questions like that is to ask a question and then get a little deeper and ask why. So like I'm married and I matched with my wife online and she works in the medical field. And so it's like a specific job. And like one of my favorite questions is if someone's like, like one girl is like a firefighter, one girl is a doctor, one girl is a lawyer working at a law firm, becoming a lawyer, one girl is a pharmacist. Like I'm thinking of all the, people that women I dated or gone on dates with. And it was a lot of those kind of careers, but those are like usually specific jobs and a certain type of job. So then I would ask things like, well, like, why did you want to become that? So, oh, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a lawyer. Like, why did you want to become a doctor? Like, is that something you always wanted to be when you were growing up or did like something happen when you were a kid? And I really like the nurses like, oh, well, like did something happen when you were a kid or like a nurse was really nice to you and they like an impact on you. And that's when you decided you wanted to like be a nurse. And so it's, it's usually something like that. Sometimes the answer is like, no, I just, I just fell into it. But for specific kind of cool careers like that, that's not stuff you just usually fall into, especially like, especially ones that are like harder. So don't just ask someone like, oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm a doctor. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And then make a lame joke. Like everyone else does like, girls that I'd meet that were school teachers, as soon as they would tell me that, I go, oh, how many times do guys instantly make like creepy jokes wishing that you were their teacher growing up or something? And they're like, oh, every time, which right there is a DHV because it shows that like I understand them and I'm not like those other guys. Now we're on the same wavelength about how those other guys are dorks. So something like that's good and understanding like where they're coming from. But the why questions are usually good. And really, if you think about it, like if you're trying to get to like a cool conversation, what I call like a DHV conversation, a DHV story or like a DHV routine or something, if you're trying to do that, like that's step three, you need like the transition and the opener to lead to that very well. So the example that's on my website is the five oceans opener, which is an opener that when I first heard it, I thought was pretty lame. And then I was like, oh, wait, I don't know all five of them. And then I knew if I didn't know all five, most people in the world won't. And I've asked that tons of times. I've had tons of students ask thousands of thousands and thousands of times around the world. I've heard one student said once someone answered it correctly, but no one's ever answered correctly for me. So I might say like, oh, hey, I know this is a weird root it. Hey, guys, false time constraint real quick. Hey, guys, non-sexual real quick. False time constraint. Root it. I need your help to win a bet with my friend over there. Or, hey, this was on the radio earlier. Or someone asked me this question and I couldn't answer it. Now it's driving me wild, driving me nuts. Like, 
crazy if like you can answer it if other people can but anyways i've been asking people all night can you name all five oceans off the top of your head and then off the top of your head so they don't pull out their phone and google it and so that's just as a real simple opener people start thinking about it it becomes silly because they're like oh the mediterranean i'm like nope that's a sea gulf of mexico nope that's not that's not a that's not an ocean it's part of an ocean and i usually only get two to three correct answers. I've never, I've had four a couple times. I've never had five, all five. And so if you don't know it, then the, the opener becomes like, oh, one of my friends asked it to me and I didn't know it. So I'm seeing if anyone else knows the answer before I Google it. Like that would be a simple way. Anyways, when you start finding out what the answer is, well, there's the Arctic. So Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and the Southern Ocean. I do it like that on purpose. Arctic for North Pole. Southern Ocean. Some people are like the Southern Ocean, like the Antarctic. I go, yeah, it used to be called the Antarctic, but they changed the name of it years ago, like um, to the Southern Ocean, kind of like how Pluto is no longer a planet. And people go, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of that. I go, so it's not our fault. Like, we don't know the names. Like, they keep changing it on us. So, like, when I was in school, that was the answer. And actually, I remember when I was in school, I cheated on the planet's desk. I actually wrote, like, all the names on the of the planets on the bottom of my shoe. But I wrote it in the morning and then like the test was after recess. So it was all rubbed off by then. So it didn't really help. But the one planet I could always remember was uh, Mars because I'm an Aries. And you're not a Scorpio, are you? So right there, I conversation steered from astronomy to astrology. I'm an Aries and I have cool stuff to talk about Aries and why I'm into astrology. Like how I got into it. There's an old DHV story there. And then I always say that line... Well, I used to always say that line that way on purpose. You're not a Scorpio, are you? Because I dated lots of Scorpios. And a lot of girls who are Scorpios love being Scorpios. They're all, they're really into it. So I would say that because they're either going to say yes. And I'm like, oh my God, I knew it. I can't even talk to you anymore. Stay away from me. And that's a little push pull. And then how did you know? And then I get to take it from there. Or they would say like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not a Scorpio. I go, yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. What are you? So it's actually like a magician's force where it's like, this isn't your card, is it? And they're like, yeah, it is. Oh, I knew it. This isn't your card, is it? Nope. Yeah, this one is. So you basically get two guesses. So that's what I would do. Now you're talking about astrology. And then really, it's kind of what I talked about earlier. There, It's like three ways. They're either really into it, they're a little into it, or they're not into it at all. Like that's kind of the way a lot of this stuff goes. There's usually like, Big, medium, little. Like that's three ways of dealing with resistance. I've talked about that before. There's a video up on that already on YouTube. And um, there's lots of stuff that's like threes. But if they're really into it, boom, you just struck gold. If they're not really into it, well, neither was I. But blah, 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 blah. Now you get to build some rapport because of that. And then if they're not into it, then you get to like take them on a little adventure because I wasn't either. And then blah, blah, blah. I had it once where the I was doing a boot camp and I was demoing this because I taught it earlier and I'm demoing it in field. It's going great. I get to astrology and the girl goes, wow, you were really cool until you just said that. Like I was really digging you until you just said that. But astrology is stupid. I just lost so much respect for you. And this was in front of a student. And I remember being like in my head, I was like, you little son of a... I was like, stupid. And you just find real unhappy but i didn't i didn't show any of it and i go wait why are you so uh, against astrology because i used to be also but why are you so against it like you're probably like you probably study psychology or like something like scientific and she goes oh actually yeah, i'm going to school like i'm, I'm going to be a psychologist and um that's what she's studying psychology that was what she was matt her major was which that was a shot in the dark but it makes sense like why is someone so against it probably because they're on the other end of the spectrum doing something else. And then I go, yeah, I go, it's weird how, um, like just a generation ago, like I think it was psychology, but like therapists, all that, they kind of would rub people's heads and the bumps on their skull, like supposedly signified like the same bumps on their brain. And that was actually, and she goes, oh yeah, flip whatever the word was. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, that we talked about that. And I was like, yeah, that's weird how like that was a real science just, a, just a generation ago. And, um, now we laugh about it. And uh, I go, but that's kind of what astrology was. Like that was like archetypes and personality types. So that's kind of the same thing. So I just, 
I, I just think that's interesting always getting to the root of stuff and how every culture kind of developed one like their own. And then she, I can see the change on her face and she's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Super powerful getting her to just change her mind like that. And then um, right after too, I go, yeah, it's interesting how like now we laugh at that stuff. I go, hopefully that doesn't happen to psychology in a few years. So like I was like trying to get her back for, for her uh, busting my ball so hard in front of the student. And I could tell that hit. And she was, then we, then we laughed about it, but I had a girlfriend at the time. And actually I think my, that boot camp, I even had my girlfriend and her friend, or maybe my girl, ex-girlfriend and her um, sister, one of the, one of those um, undercover at a bar. So like, I didn't go much further than that, but after I said that and I reframed it like that, she was, uh, she was very interested. So how to break the ice with a girl you like and not be a creep opinion openers Hey, I need your help with something real quick. I got a question. And if you're still thinking like that, just do it real easy. Set the bar low, set like attainable goals, which I was saying earlier about when you have a wing, like you focus on different things. Well, at the beginning, set like real easy to achieve goals. Just like if you're going to the gym and you're going to start working out, you know, I, I don't tell you, oh, I need you to run 30 miles like in the next two hours or whatever, like some crazy goal. You're like, no, no, just walk a mile. And then let's do some stretches and mobility and we'll do some push-ups and squats. And we'll just kind of see what we're, work, we're working with. Like that would be a better first workout. So that's a key is setting the bar low. And, uh, and lastly, if you're also not good at this stuff yet, don't shit where you eat. So don't do this like in class and in, in your classes at school with your coworkers, with people like in your neighborhood or at the restaurant downstairs. I used to live in a building that had restaurants downstairs and a wine bar. Like don't, don't hit on them because then if you creep them out, if you, if you, if you crash and burn, like now they're going to be there all the time. So I lived in Phoenix and then we would go to Tempe, which is the next city over, which is where ASU was. And that's where we go and practice. And then when I moved back to Phoenix years later, I lived in downtown Phoenix. Like I had all my spots picked out. I'd go there on dates and stuff, but I would never take students there because then my students, if I, if I bring a few students there, I'm like the cool guy who always shows up with like an awkward, weird dude. And then that's going to ruin my rep there. So like, don't shoot where you eat. Okay. All right. Someone else just hopped in. Good to see you, man. So we bit about, did about 50 minutes. So I covered all the wingmanship stuff. And uh, I think I'm going to be hopping off in a little, but if you guys have any questions, now's the time. I'm here. I love having the support. Thanks for swinging by. I think this is a pretty good video. So if you guys, uh, pretty good content in this. So if you guys want, like rewatch it later for the, for the, the lessons. But if you have any questions about anything, I'm here. There's a chat box. Type away. I'm happy to help. And then I'll, I'll quickly write there. So this is my lock picking stuff. I was playing around with that earlier today, but I just got right there one of the um, electric pumpkin carving knives. And I try to get those a few times and I always like missed out, but uh, they were always sold out when I would go to grab them. But I was at Walmart today. They had, it was like six, seven bucks. And I've seen lots of videos on it. And this is something I want to play with where you actually like put a lock pick on the end. You take the little saw off or you maybe grind it. And then you put your own, you either grind it down or cut it off and put your own lock pick, um, the type you like, on the end of it. And you actually use it as like a little electric rake. I was in a lock picking class and the guy, the instructor demoed it where he had like a lock picking gun that was like hundreds of dollars. And he had the lock and put it in there brrr, and it popped it open. Like you have the tinder rod on it and open it up very quickly. And then he's like, now we've heard these work really well. And I just built one and they put it in there, bzz, and open the padlock in like two seconds. So something I want to play with. And these are always kind of things I'm always playing with and working on. And there's some new stuff coming soon. I got to find a wing. So that was basically the whole video. Do you need a wing? Wings are really, really good. They help you see things you don't see and they can help push you and they can help support you. But I'll tell you, it's hard finding a good wing. Like there was um, there was other other coaches I worked with who were like supposed to be good wings, and maybe they were with each other, but when they would like hang out with us or other people or like the interns and stuff, like they weren't. 
And there was even one of them I had to talk to, like a couple other guys tried to talk to him. And then I talked to him once and I was like, Hey man, like, what are you doing? Like you're, he was like, Oh, I didn't know I couldn't talk. He was trying to get in defensive. And I was like, dude, you're breaking like the first rule of wingmanship. Like you you were a guy like writing stories about it, like teaching guys how to do this. Like, I didn't think I had to cover it with you, but this is the deal. And I had to like lay down the law on it. And then finally, like he st- it still didn't click. And I was like, okay, well then just don't talk to you. If I'm talking to some girls, don't, talk to us. Like if you can't follow the bro code, the wing code, like don't even come over. And like, this was a guy who was a coach and he should know better. So I've only found a couple dudes. I mean, I almost want to say less than like five that like I would hang out with, I would roll with that were cool. That wouldn't step on your toes intentionally. Sometimes you gotta like figure things out, but they wouldn't step on your toes intentionally. They wouldn't backstab you. And um, like I only found a few. And then even sometimes with that, and sometimes with those guys, like things didn't work out. So yeah, it's nice having a wing, but you don't need one. And then I got to the point pretty quickly where we I'd go out with my wing, which was good, because then we're like, it's like going to the gym together. You have like a workout buddy. But then he's going to go over there and do his workouts, and I'm going over here doing my thing. So then are you really like workout buddies? But at least you, you rolled together with, and that that's, helps out a ton. So that was quickly what became like how I would do it because like I like doing my own thing. I like just – if I can't get the girl on my own, like I don't deserve her. I don't need a wing. And I remember I was, I was doing magic tricks all the time. I love magic. I have like a whole bin of magic tricks. Like ever since I was a kid, I did it. And, uh, and then some kid that was like a bully made fun of me when I was in grade school and I, I did it for performance day. They made fun of me. And then like, I stopped doing it for years. I just quit with magic. Cause one douchebag like busted my balls, embarrassed me about it. And then when I started getting like on the self-help self-improvement journey, I actually realized I was like, why did I give up something I was passionate about? Cause of this one douchebag that I didn't see, like after another year, he got kicked, expelled. I was like, I never even saw him again. Like, why did I give up something I love? So when I started getting into all this pickup stuff, that's why the tagline for the website is elevate your game, elevate your life. Because you start realizing this is symptoms of larger overall issues. And I realized like, hey, I need to start doing what I want to do. And like, not care what idiots think or strangers think. So I got really into magic again. And I loved it. I I love like mind effing people with it. I love knowing how it's done when other people don't know how it's done. Like, so I used to do it all the time. And then I realized one day, like it's a crutch. Cause I saw like an attractive girl at the mall. I was like, Oh man, I don't have my, uh, I used to wear like a leather jacket. It was winter time. I had some pockets here. I was like, Oh man, I don't have my, I don't have my stuff on me. Oh, I can't talk to this girl. I realized it was a crutch. And so when I realized I'm using crutches, which a lot of guys use like alcohol as a crutch, a wingman is a crutch. Um, go spending a lot of money. Oh, I got to go to the VIP section. So I use that as a crutch. So any, anytime I was using crutches, I was like, I got to get rid of all those. So a lot of times having a wingman's a crutch because I'm not always going to have them with me. Like we would go out three or four nights a week because he was a massage therapist. I had uh, sold my house with my ex-wife, made a whole bunch of money and we were very, very committed to it. But a lot of guys can't go out that much. So if you're only going out once a week, like you can't get good by being social and practicing this stuff one time a week you need to do it more so the majority of your time you're solo so a wingman definitely helps with bars and clubs and stuff but the other thing is i those are like batting cages i never met a girl that i had a real real cool connection with at a bar or club i met lots that i had short-term fun with or dated or flings or whatever with but never one that i actually had a real connection with that was a real cool chick all those were met day game day-to-day life living life online or social circle through friends or through the cool stuff i was doing already so bars and clubs are batting cages and you go there and practice a lot of times it's the cold approach you got to get over that i'm uncomfortable in this environment i got to practice environments i'm uncomfortable with and i got to practice against like groups and trying to deal with music and dance and all this other stuff and if you can do that and get someone's attention, a group of people's attention there, like getting it at Starbucks or at the mall when you're in the, in the, in the belt section, looking at jeans and belts and some girl walks by like it's cake. So I'm slowly growing my social circle of bros. Hopefully I can find a wing. I said this earlier, 
best way is lead by example. You level up just like getting in shape. You level up, let them see the difference. And all of a sudden they're like, whoa, what happened to you, man? And you're like, oh, it's this book I read. You should check it out. It's called The Game. That's what we'd always tell guys to do. And then if they don't read the game, like that was kind of their buy-in. If they wouldn't even read it, they're not serious about this stuff. So I'd always tell them, like, read the book. And later I even did this with friends who were like trying to, this is really how it really, really started teaching after we tried to coach the group of guys just so they could hang out with us. A lot of people I knew or got to know, and then they would, they would eventually hear my story, they would go, oh, wow, like my brother needs your help or I have a friend who needs your help. And that never works out well because that's like, oh, hey, you're a stranger. I want to introduce to my brother or my friend who's an alcoholic. And he doesn't think he's an alcoholic, but I want you to come help him. Like, it's kind of like that. Oh, he sucks with girls and this guy's a dating coach. And so then a lot of times the friend was like insulted about it. But I would always tell him, I'm like, okay, well, tell him about the book, the game, like get it for him. It's 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, tell him to read it. And then if they read it, like then we can reach out and then we can talk and I'll help them. I'll definitely give them some help. And then if they get the book and don't like it, like I'll buy it from them. Cause I used to like give out books all the time to friends and stuff. But I was like, Oh, I got, I got a book collection. I could just get it a couple extra copies. So all, I mean, I made that offer countless times throughout the years. I think once I had a friend of a friend, a friend of my brother's partially read the book, but never finished it. He's married though now. So he, he didn't need me, but that was it. So other than that, like no one else really read it, but a lot of the guys who saw me, who knew me before and then saw me after, then they were like, whoa, okay, now I'll take it more serious. So that's the key. I'm really good at doing fitness on my own. Yep. Either be oversensitive or over, or either be oversensitive or confrontational when you bring it up. Oh, how do you reject wings? I met some of my day that were either. I'm assuming that's like to awkward assholes or had a major chip on their shoulder. It would otherwise they would be oversensitive or confrontational. So yes, what I refer to that as is that's like the AFC. So nerdy, the virgin or the AFC rage. And a, a guy I knew in LA uh, who was a little guy, like even though I knew him for a while, he still had that. And he shouldn't have that at all, but he still had that that nerdy virgin angst chip on his shoulder. And so if, if they have that, that's like they need to like heal. They need to get over that. And if they're still carrying that, like they're they're dangerous. I shouldn't say dangerous. They're poisonous to be around. And they're not going to be someone who like. So the very, very first story I told at the beginning, the guy who um, opened the, the two flight attendants who I saw, and that inspired me. Like later that night, I I went over and was winging him. This is before I read the book or anything. And then later he like gave the girls his card. And he's like, oh, I need to go. And like, I'm still there with him. So like he ditched me. And like, I don't know if he went to go get a drink or go do something else, but he like gave the girls his card. And he was trying to be an artist. And so he was really trying to draw and do lots of stuff. And he, like, he had all the support from all of his buddies. But I remember it was kind of awkward. And he left very awkwardly. And the girl's like, well, what's that about? And I was like, oh, I think he had to go to the bathroom or something. We're here with a group of people. And I was like, but man, he's, he's, his art's really good. You should hold on to that card. That's going to be worth something one day because he's like so talented. And then like five minutes later, he came by and the girl's like, oh, your friend said you're a really good artist. That Like I should hold on to this card because you're going to be famous. And then he turns and he's like, why would you say that? You never say that to an artist. That's the worst thing you say. And he starts ripping me a new one about it when I'm just trying to be like a bro to him. And so I, I realized with that guy right then, I was like, oh, even though he's like learning this stuff, he's not someone that like I can hang out with yet because he was like insulted or something. And then he's like shitting on me in front of them and they just ruined everything. And uh, that's when later I was like, all right, I'm done with him. The other guy who was the virgin, I was like, I'll help him out. We'll read the book. And then my wing, old wing, like the two of them were going to be wings. And two of us were going to be wings. And then he quit. And then this guy quit. And then we gave him together. So, like, I didn't even talk to him because he just quit. And then later he got really weird about stuff. And then he would, like, blog about anti-PUA stuff. He was just a, a very cranky dude. And so, 
the the problem is if those guys don't get over that, you can't you can't even hang out with them. So if they're a good friend, I would maybe talk to them about it and be like, hey man, you gotta fucking lighten up. You gotta chill out. Like you're, you're like angry. You come off as like confrontational. You're like snappy. Um, you don't come off as fun. Like it's kind of it's like kind of like a Debbie Downer. Maybe give that to him, but but more than likely, if you say that to him, he's gonna get like really offended and then think you're a dick. Oh, why you you can say that to me? Oh, and then like turn around on you. So the problem is most of those guys, they're just not gonna get over it, and that's just how they are. And that's how it was in LA, especially for one guy. And like I said, out of everyone I met out in LA, he was the guy who should not have that. And he had it. And then he even tried to flex on me a few times with some of that stuff, and I had to check him. And uh, then that kind of like ruined our friendship. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the way it goes with those guys. And then just stop inviting them out. Like, just kind of like how you handle it with a chick. You just stop inviting them, stop hanging out with them like they get the message. Or you hang out with them. And then if you tell them the, the intro, like I said earlier, no, nah, man, I'm good. Do you, hey, do you need a drink? No, I'm good. And then just don't let them be around you. And then if they want to, well, you're like, hey, I'm 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 opening your your job is to come help me this is what i need and if you can't do a b and c then that's it because when you're in a group i'll i'm willing to do whatever you want i'll say dumb stuff i'll tell them i'm i'm gay or i'm married or whatever so that way i'm disqualifying myself so they don't think i'm a potential suitor so like maybe that's what the deal is for me but if i'm willing to do that for you and you're not willing to do what i ask then can't trust them Lots of crutches. Yep. And that's really what it comes down to just kind of in life. Like, where are my crutches in life? So is alcohol a crutch? Um, wingman a crutch? Magic? I got to be at this certain place? Like, whatever it is. We joked about it during boot camps later that I would tell guys sleep's a crutch because we would go out all night, debrief until like four or five in the morning, get a couple hours of sleep, and then uh, do it again. And then do the same thing and do it again. And like on the third day, guys have only gotten like five, six hours of sleep. I'm like, sleep's a crutch. Later, it evolved into air's a crutch, food's a crutch. But obviously, those aren't. You need those to survive. I don't need all the other stuff like to function. So, yeah, I got to spend stop spending too much time at low life dive bars. If that's what you like, if that's what you like doing, I like chill dive bars and stuff too. The problem is, if I'm trying to practice my social skills, those usually aren't the best places for it. So Irish bars, pubs, beer gardens, those are like were usually my favorite spots. There's a couple of them on Mill, uh, Casey Moore's Oyster House, and then Rollabulla. Rollabulla, they were on the other ends of like the strip. So you'd, we'd start at one, and then we'd work our way down to the other. And then if we wanted, we'd flip around and go back the other side of the street. And so that was kind of always our route. But Rollabola got closed, and those were usually my favorite kind of go-to spots. And a lot of times, it's like going out and exploring is part of it. Like you go into these other bars and clubs and restaurants you haven't been into before. Walk into a restaurant that's kind of like a cool place. It's got a cool bar. Walk in. Oh, I've just never been in here before. I'm just going to kind of walk around, check it out. The hostess is like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, have fun. The bar's over there. Walk through, do some cold approaches, talk to the waitress, talk to the bartender, talk to the hostess. I would then try to make like an impression with the hostess in downtown Phoenix. I'm like, oh, what do you guys do here? What are you known for and stuff? And then she'd tell me and I'm like, okay, what's your name? Okay, Heather. I go, all right, next time I'm back here, Heather, I'm going to be on a date. Okay. And it's going to be with a really pretty girl. So when I'm, when I'm here and I'm with that pretty girl, it's your job to make me look cool. You got to act like you, you know, I'm, I'm like a regular, like I've been coming here all the time and they usually laugh and joke about it. Well, when I was going crazy on online dating, a lot of times a day or two later, I'm back. And then all of a sudden the hostess is, oh my God, Bravo. It's, Bravo is an easy to remember name. Oh my God, Bravo. It's so good to see you again, blah, blah, blah. And that was like a little joke we had. I would go on the date. So now I'm like checking out new places. I've got the date. I, I told the hostess like, oh, I'm going to be coming here with a pretty girl. Then after that date happens and doesn't go well, I come back a day or two later. She's there again, the bartender, the waitress, the hostess, whoever it was. And uh, I'm like, oh, hey, it's good to see you again. She goes, oh, what happened? I go, ah, she, she wasn't cool. Like we, it wasn't, we weren't vibing. I go, not like us. Like too bad I, I, I didn't swipe right on you, but like, yeah, it didn't work out with her. And now I just have tons of social proof. Now I'm letting her know I'm joking around, I'm flirting. But the thing is too, like when it's a hired gun, you can go like, you can slow game it. And so 
I didn't do that before until I got good because I told you before, don't shoot where you eat. But all that kind of stuff is things I started doing later, and that was all without having a wing. So anyways, dive bars are fun, but you're not you're not seeing attractive women. You want it to be women that you're attracted to that like you have you, you, you you've I don't like the term approach anxiety, especially like approach anxiety. Social anxiety, that's really what it is. But I don't even like those terms. Like to me, it's approach excitement. So like when you're getting on a scary ride or a scary movie, uh, um, a roller coaster, like that could be exciting and that gets your heart racing, but that's a positive. So I don't usually see women that give me approach excitement at dive bars. I usually don't see that at my old jujitsu school. I usually don't see that at the gun range. So I got to go to those places where those women are. And so when you're a dude who does a lot of manly stuff, it's actually hard to harder to meet women, which is one of the reasons why I started working at the yoga studio all those years ago was because I was trying to like get out of my comfort zone and do something totally different. Unfortunately, it was mostly gay guys who were there, but there were some attractive women. And how do the break the ice with the girl you like and not? I think I already answered that. I don't know if you hopped off. I saw the numbers disappear. So I actually answered that and kind of went through the whole five oceans. And really, if you already know them and you already opened them, then just getting into like a DHV topic, which would be like astrology or something. And then just having a conversation about that. I don't want to rehash that. My voice is starting to go out. It's been a long day. Um, but already on my blog and there's already podcasts, like all free stuff on the Bravo Hood. <clears throat> so you just need to go there and there's audio clips that you can click that explain tons of that. So that's all there. Anything else? Or well, I'm going to call it. If you guys like this, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up. I see some guys already have. And uh, subscribe and like and just commenting. That's like huge for the algorithm. So even just saying thanks right there. We've all watched these videos, those videos throughout the years. Hey, thumbs up, subscribe and all that. But yeah, I'm trying to do this more. So it's going to help me and it helps the channel and it makes me more people in here the more fun these are the more of them i do so support is uh is greatly appreciated and it's just like what you do if you're not it's so simple to do and just support people and even like I, I i looked up on it like you're not supposed to like a video right away at the very beginning because then like the algorithm doesn't like it so even on the podcast and stuff i listen to i was just listening to like the sean ryan podcast and I'll wait like 10, 15 minutes or Mark Dice. And then I'll like, I'll click it then. Like in when, when I actually hear something, I'm like, oh, that was really good. I'll do it. Because supposedly that's even helps. And then it's funny now with like some of the guys I really like, like I don't even like skip the commercials because I'm like, oh, I want to help them with the algorithm. But anyways, I'm not asking any of that stuff. Real simple. If you like it, thumbs up. If you like it, comment. And uh, that's huge. So, all right, guys, I'm going to bounce. What time is it? nine o'clock okay went a little longer than i thought but all good i'm gonna go finish watching a movie with mrs g and get to sleep because i was up very very early today so hope this helped i'm gonna be doing more of these in the future there's already a couple of them i did that were like my testing live streams and they're all having titles on them so that's all topics if you guys want check them out and um yeah, I'm going to be putting more stuff up there. I got a couple more videos from back in the day that were like infield stuff. So I'll be sharing those. And then some of the some of the events I spoke at, I have lots of the lots of the video that's just I've never been released. I always was keeping things on the down low. I didn't really like putting too much stuff out there. And um but now that now that I got a family, I gotta I gotta do more work. So I'm putting more of it out there now. So this is like the way I'm I'm uh, spreading the spreading the word. The other big reason is there's so many guys out there I'm seeing that are more than ever hopeless at this stuff. And there's guys out there that are scamming like always, but even more now that are unqualified. And that was a big thing. I was, I was talking with a friend and they're like, why aren't you posting more stuff? Why aren't you doing more stuff out there? And I was like, ah, I just don't like it. I like being low key and stuff. And um, my friend was like, yeah, but if these guys who are looking for this stuff, like don't find you. And this is a guy who's a former student who's like, married now as a family and stuff he's like yeah if they don't find you and learn from you they're going to learn from like one of those other douchebags and uh, or one of those douchebags not other douchebags but they're gonna learn from one of those douchebags and i was like fuck you're right so that actually finally clicked in my head where i was like all right i gotta do more of this stuff so more's coming 
And uh, like always, I appreciate the support. So if this helps support back. And uh, then also feel free to post questions and stuff or email them. If you guys are ever, I understand this is like a weird topic. So if you guys are ever shy about posting something, then just shoot me an email. My email's on all the accounts. It's on the website, bravo at the bravohood.com. Like just shoot me an email and then just say, hey, I want to be, I want this to be private. And then that becomes a question I put on my notepad that I can like answer on future videos. So you can get any question that you're curious about, almost any question answered. So, all right, I've said goodbye a few times. It's official. Good night, guys.